Today, I want to speak to you for a short while on the subject. I'm broken. Lord, press reset. I don't know if you've ever had the experience where things are going good for you. And life seems to be working well. Somewhere along the line, things change. Yeah? yeah? Suddenly, you wake up and your life is changed. And so, you become broken. And you have, you're asking God, can you press reset? Can we start all over again? I, 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 my children have a good understanding of the technology and the cell phones. And I had a problem with my cell phone sometime, um, not too long ago. There was a corrupted app on my cell phone that was causing it to freeze. And uh, Joel came and he took the cell phone. And he did something. And he was working again. But I lost the corrupted thing and every other thing that I had on it. He said he went back to factory mode. It came back and he said, it is as though you just bought the phone. Press reset. Wouldn't you like if you had a reset button in your life? <laughs> I'm telling you, we would change a lot of stuff. If we can just go back to factory setting, to just go back there when things were good. Some of us would go back to our childhood because adulthood is a bit burdensome. When you understand what it is to be married and have children and all of that, you tell yourself, my goodness, I think I need to start all over again. If I know that I know this thing, if I start all over again, I'll get it right this time. Yeah. But we do have a reset button. And that's, and that's what I want to share with you today from Jeremiah chapter 18. Jeremiah chapter 18. When you have it, see, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's in the Old Testament. That's a clue. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 1 to 4. All right. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise, go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Where? At the potter's house. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels, and the vessel he made of clay was mad in the hand of the potter, so he made it again, another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make it. So we see here Jeremiah is prophesying uh, God is creating his prophecy. Israel was God's people. But Israel has been misbehaving. Israel has not been a very good people of God. So when you look and you see the history of Israel, you could tell yourself Israel had some real problems. So he's saying, I am going to now do a work in Israel to bring them back. In the book, I think it is Romans, the Bible says that, you know, I bear Israel record that they have a zeal for God. They're passionate about God, but not according to knowledge. Right? So along the way, you were born perfect. You were born from dust. You are clay. You are dirt. The Bible says in the book of 2 um, Corinthians chapter 4 that we have this treasure in earthen vessels, dirt vessels. You and I are dirt vessels. We are the clay. We are the ones that Jeremiah would be talking about here. Israel would be the one that God is talking about here. And we are dirt. But we were, we were born perfect dirt. Remember we talking about imperfectly perfect? We were born perfect dirt. Along the way of your life, things got messed up. 
things that you did not have control over in some cases are things that you actually had control over, but you got messed up. But notice what the Bible says. He went down to the potter's house, and behold, he, the potter, this is where we have the clay. The potter gets his hand on the clay, and he feels everything in the clay. He can feel every bump in it, because this is supposed to be something smooth. This is supposed to be something pliable. And so as he is dealing with the clay, he recognizes that there is something, but the, the potter is more concerned with operating the wheel. Notice how his attention is on the wheel, is on the clay, is on the system he's doing. He's not going to be distracted from, with something else. You can't be making a vessel and a vessel that must have certain specifications to it and be distracted. So God is our potter and he's working on you and his attention is on you. But the Bible says the potter is working at the wheel. This at his foot here is what spins the wheel. So as it spins, the clay turns and his hand begins to shape the vessel. It is shaped by the hand of the potter. Your life is being shaped by the potter. God is working on you. But in the process of working, note what the Bible says. He went down to the pot and he wrought a work on the wheel, not the clay. The wheel creates the circumstances for the clay. The wheel spins at different speed based upon the potter, how he operates the wheel. Let me tell you. The things that are happening in your life and my life is God at the wheel. And sometimes the clay is going to spin so fast it may get dizzy. But trust me, the potter is working at the wheel. Everything that happens in your life is not by mistake. It is because this potter never took its eyes off the wheel. And he gives that total attention. So whatever it is, whatever it is that comes our way, it is the wheel, the circumstances and the things that are happening in your life that God is working on to make sure that it does not go out of control. Do you know that if he spins this thing too fast, your clay could start splattering all over the place? But no, not with a good potter. He knows the speed to spin your life. He knows the circumstances to allow in your life. He knows the people to allow into your life. If you just settle yourself down and allow the potter to spin your wheel. Don't get impatient with the potter. It will take a while for it to happen. But the clay is being formed. So the circumstances that is happening is all in God's will. And he says, listen, don't get too impatient. In the book of um, Romans chapter 9, Verse 20 and 21. Because sometimes the spinning that is taking place, we don't like this spinning. We don't like the circumstances we're going through in life. But he gives us comfort here. In verse 20, chapter 9. Nay, O man, who are you that reply against God or complain against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, why hast thou made me thus? Why are you putting me through all of this? Why? Because you are being shaped, you are being formed, you are being framed. Hath not the potter power over the clay? God is in control. And so therefore he's in power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another vessel unto dishonor. Some people will have a better life than you do. Some people will have a better circumstance than you do. It just depends on what vessel is being made. It just depends upon what is being formed and the stage of its formation. So your life is at different stages and phases of its shaping. But as the vessel is fully formed, 
the speed of the wheel slows down because it's coming to an end. But in the early stages, it's going to be fast paced moving. And so he says, he works on the wheel. But now, I would note, that, note our second point. So the first point that, that he worked and worked and worked on the wheel, and the vessel he made of clay was mad, but never said what mad it. He never said what gave it its defect. It just said it was mad. When you look at your life, my dear brethren, you ain't so hot. Trust me. There's some stuff in your life that you and I don't know about. There's some stuff in my life that you don't know about. We ain't so good. But we might try to keep it private. But the potter, the natural eye may not see the ma. Inside of this clay, you may not see that there are lumps. You may not see that there is something going wrong. But the potter's hand is sensitive to the clay. So as it spins, he tells himself, no, something is wrong with this clay. So inside of your life, after you have lived a couple years, it does not take you long to be broken. Man born of a woman is but a few days and we are broken. That's what the Bible says. He's but a few days and full of trouble. It doesn't take us long to start recognizing how messed up we are. So when you look at your life, you could start telling yourself, I may appear perfect in front of people. People may admire who I am, but I know my life is not going as good as other people think. But the potter does. Because the, the natural eye cannot see the floor, but the potter is an expert at what he does. This is why he's a potter. God knows what we can't see. God knows my life, that you can't tell what is happening in my life. But when God feels me out, God says, Michael, you are mad. You are spoiled. That's the word. There is something wrong in your life. Other people think you're perfect. Other people admire you. But you ain't so good. And sometimes we need to come to the point of recognizing things ain't going so hot with me. And we just have to stop the pretense. There's a point in time that we just have to tell ourselves, I have to face up to my situation. And this is why David said, my sin is ever before me. I can no longer hide it. And so therefore, Lord, I need to press reset. And David said, create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit within me. Lord, press reset. Because I'm broken. And sometimes we need to just learn to repent. We just need to learn to say, I'm sorry. I, I, I need to start all over again. I need to get back factory setting. I need to start from scratch. And that's where sometimes you just have to just get down on your knees and say, Lord, okay, it's me and you again. This is the same old Michael. I was here yesterday, Lord. You remember me? I said that um, I, I messed up and I, I'm sorry. And um, yeah, I'm back here again. I know you're tired of seeing me, but I, I need a new, a new reset. Um, you still have that hand on the button, Lord? Yeah, just press it there for me, please. Let me just start all over again. Because things are going so good. Because the way I behaved the other day with my wife, I, I know she's un unhappy and I just need you to press reset. The way I behaved on work, Lord, I, I, I didn't mean to. But I don't know, things just got out of hand. I, I became mad. Press reset. The sin that is inside of my life, I don't know how I got so caught up in it and I don't know how come I got so tangled up in it. But Lord, just press reset. Amen. We all need a reset button. We all need to go back to factory um, code and, and go back to it. And so he said the, the thing was mad, spoiled, broken. Are you spoiled? The Bible says we all have... Yeah. We, we all have been mad. And so we all need God to stand by. Lord, don't go too far from that reset button there because I, I figure I'm going to need you again in a while. Don't go too far, Lord. Because every day, every day, some, some of us need reset often. Some of us need reset a lot. But don't feel bad about that because all of us are going through it. Same thing. 
So therefore, Lord, I'm broken. But Presby said, so I don't know what caused the marring. I don't know what's causing the problem in your life. You don't know what's causing the problem in my life. The Bible never said what caused the, the clay to be mad. But this is one thing I do know. It said it was mad in the hand of the potter. Not mad by the potter, but mad in the hand of the potter. The clay never left the hand. Does not mean that you are falling away. Does not mean that God has forsaken you. Does not mean that you are sinful and God has, has, has disfellowshipped you or anything like that. It does not mean that you have, you have become a heathen and you have gone into the world or you are backslidden. You are still in the hand of the potter. You are still a Christian. But you are mad. Broken. So sometimes we, start to, we tell ourselves, I don't want to go back to church because I don't feel comfortable. I feel like a hypocrite knowing all the things that are going on in my life. You are still in the hand. You are still inside. It is in the hand of the potter. The clay is mad, but not by the potter. And so while you are inside of there, just tell yourself, Lord, I know I'm still inside. And you see my struggle. You see the circumstances that I'm going through. You see all the problems and pain that I'm going through. You see all the, the, the overwhelming problems I have to encounter in life. And Lord, thank you for still keeping me in the hand. Because you could have thrown away the clay. And start with a new batch of clay. But he never threw away the clay. And that's what brings hope. Because when you look at your life and you realize how bad you are. When I look at my life and I realize how, much, how many times I've messed up. I thank God he never threw the clay away. He kept the clay. Because he was mad in the hands of the potter. And here's what the Bible says. He made it another vessel. He pressed with it. Started all over again from scratch. Now, it didn't say it made him a different vessel. He made it another vessel. He started all over again to work on you. You and I, when we see your faults, we get discouraged with you messing up so often. So we really hope that you just banish, not with God. God just wants to just start over again with you. And I, I, I thank God that God starts over again with me. But he has started over so often. And God has started over again so often with you that you ask yourself, why did he just make me a different vessel? No, because the clay is still good. The clay had a marring of the clay. And the potter can be able to determine I will just start a new vessel. I'm going to just, I, I, I have seen sometimes my mother roll bread with dough. She roll it out, she don't like how it look. And she just wrap it all up again and start kneading all over again to get it the shape she wants. Same dough, same thing all over again. And then when it comes out, it comes out a nice piece of bread. That's what God can do for us. God can make us into another vessel. And so God is saying, there is a reset button that I have. Do you need it? All we have to do is just say, Lord, I need a reset. Because I'm not perfect and I'm making mistakes and I keep messing up and so on. And sometimes people keep remembering how I've messed up. People keep reminding me of the mistakes I've made. And sometimes the wheel spins too fast for me. The circumstances in my life, all the things that are happening in my life, I just can't take it. I feel overwhelmed. But the potter, is, his eyes are on the wheel. And so he sees and he controls those circumstances. He's working on the circumstances himself. And thank God, God is in control. He's never going to allow things to get out of hand in your life. The temptations that you have is never going to be more than you could be. The persecution that you experience, never going to be out of hand. God is going to provide a way of escape in every situation that you make. God is going to make sure that as he watches that and he continues to do it. Now notice, the shape of the clay keeps changing over a period of time. So there are going to be some sinks. There's going to be some smooth sides. There's going to be some, so some extensions that he's going to put on. But he's in charge. And the potter, uh, the, the thing about the potter is that sometimes, you know, the potter feels the resistance of the clay. 
and he feels that the clay is not pliable enough. I can't work this clay because the clay is hard. And sometimes we really fight against God. Trust me. We, we know that God is trying to talk to us and God is trying to adjust us, but we're resisting God. The, what the potter does, sometimes the potter wets his hand. You understand me? Wets his hand and just adds some more liquid inside of it. And, and the things, you know, the Bible, sometimes we have to ask God for added grace. Uh, added grace. And so God, God dips his hand in grace and sprinkles us, soften us up, uh, and soften our heart and our conscience and so on. And then we start rolling again. You see, but along the way, we start to dry up again. You see, so we, we, we're getting hard again, even though God delivered us some time ago. And then we have to ask God for added grace, and God sinks his hand into grace and mercy and peace and so on, and sprinkles peace in your life and so on, and he shakes it off there and so on. And then we start to roll again and so on. And sometimes we say, God, I need some mercy. And say, so God dips us and puts us there again, and we're beginning to take shape. Is there anybody needing God to work in their life today? Is there anybody who needs God to just dip his hand in something because there is a resistance we're feeling and there's a hardness and there's a fed up and a frustration that we're feeling and God is feeling that fed up and frustration and God just needs to dip once more and say, Lord, dip again. Sprinkle me. I'm telling you, we all need that from time to time. And God is prepared to add. God is prepared to be able to watch you and say, okay, today, this Sunday, we're starting all over again. You messed up. Things was bad yesterday. Things was bad the day before. Things have been going bad in your life are starting all over again. Let's go again. On the wheel, we're starting from scratch. God has patience. Because I don't know how long I will sit and work on one clay. One clay taking me so long. But God, God is going to take 70 years working on one man. And before he dies, makes him into a vessel. 70 years? That's God. How old are you? Don't answer. <laughs> Whatever age yours is, look how long God has been working on you. And he ain't done yet. Are you resisting? Are you hardened clay? Are you getting hard on the wheel? You cannot get hard on the wheel. There's a time after the shaping that you can be put aside and then you're put into a kindle. A kindle. That too. <laughs> Where you are put there. But look at what happens. Here he puts water to soften you. What does he put you in to harden you? Fire. Fire. <laughs> so if you think this part is rough while you are being made into a vessel, wait till God has actually made you into a vessel and this is what the potter wants. He puts you into the fire. Because now you're ready. Ah, but you've got to work through this part of it. You've got to work through this part of it in order for you to be able to get up there. Final, this is what I want you to notice. In the, so he made it again, another vessel. And watch at this verse. As seemed good, not to the clay, to the potter, to make it. God is going to make you for his glory and honor. It's not about you. So sometimes, as a clay, we just need to submit to the potter and allow us to spin. Allow God to shape me. Lord, I don't know where this is going. I don't know why this relationship is going to. I don't know why this marriage is going to. I don't know why my job is going to. I don't know why my finances is going in such a... As though it is going downhill all the time. I don't know why the, all of these things are happening in my life. But I submit to you because I want it to be according to your will. Clay should never fight potter. Never. Don't ever fight the potter. Submit to the potter. 
If you are here this morning and you say, boy, you know, I've been going through some rough times. I've been going through some, some terrible times and I need some grace. I need some peace. I need some mercy. And I ask God that he will just sprinkle me and, and, and soften me up. Soften up my heart. Soften up my conscience. There are people that I need to forgive, but, then, but I, my heart is hardened against those people. But Lord, just sprinkle some stuff for me and soften my heart. I, I, and then, Lord, I, I want you, the way how my life is going, I think I have really gone overboard and I've messed up. I just want you to press reset. I'm broken. My heart is broken. My life is broken. Press reset.